Okay, we are going to go over module test two and talk about what the right answers were, how you would best find them before you do the retake today. So this first question is talking about negative 1.9 and negative 1.48. So before we even look at any of the answers, we want to just think about what do we already know about these numbers? Oh, I mixed those two up. So what do we already know about those? If I'm thinking about them, I'm gonna think about this like a 90. So I know if I'm going on my number line, here's zero, here's negative one, here's negative two. Negative 1.48 is pretty close to negative 1.5, one and a half. Negative 1.9 is almost negative $2. 1.9 goes here. So I know 1.9 is to the left, so it is less than negative 1.48. Or I can put that backwards and say negative 1.48 is greater than negative 1.9. So now we're going to come back to our question and see which answers fit this best. So when I read here, it says select all of the true statements. So I need to make sure I pick everything that is true, not just one answer. So if you only picked one thing, that's part of the problem here. So we need to be careful mathematicians and mathematicians watch for little details like this. So negative 1.8 is to the left. I can come back and check. Yes, that is true. It is to the left. So it's not to the right. So I'm looking for which number is closer to zero. Looks like negative 1.48 is closer to zero. And we said that negative 1.4 was greater than negative 1.9. So negative 1.4 is greater. So use your number line and go back and check yourself to get the right answers there. Hey, number two wants us to pick the point on the number line that is the opposite of two thirds. So here's one, one third, two thirds. So two thirds is B. I need the opposite of that, one third, two thirds. So the opposite of B is C. They're on the same distance on opposite sides of zero there. So again, watching those key words, making sure you're picking the right thing. Hey, we need a least common denominator for four, three, and nine. So I'm going to start, make a list of 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 30, 36, 40. Got 3, 6, 9, 12. If you don't know these as fast as I do, you can add on. So 12, 13, 14, 15. 15, 16, 17, 18. 19, 20, 21. So I'm going to keep going faster now. 24, 27, 30, do a few more here. 33, 36. And our nines, 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54. Let's see if that gets it there. So do they all have a 9? I see one here, but not up here. So it's not 9. 18 and 18. No 18 in the fours. 27, 27, no 27 in the fours. 36, 36, 36. So my least common denominator, if I had these fractions, is 36. I would have to change them all into 36. Number four, we are deciding whether these are true or false. So you've got negative 2, 6 is less than negative 2.6. So negative 2.6, it was less than, not what it said, less than, let me make sure I'm getting that the right way. Yep, is less than negative 2.6. So here on, again, I'm going to just have a very basic number line. I know they're both negatives, so I'm going to have a negative one and a negative two on here. So if I'm thinking about this like pizza, this is two sixths of a pizza. So I don't even have a whole piece of pizza. So it's going to be between zero 
and one. So here's negative two six. And this one here tells me I have two holes. So I need to go over two and six more pieces. So negative two six. So I know to the right is bigger. So two six is greater. The greater side should open up to negative two six and this one does not. So this one is false. So we know that negative 2.6 is less, so this sign needs to point the other direction. Okay, our next one is negative 0.8 and the absolute value of negative 8 tenths. So negative 0.8 and the absolute value of 8 tenths. So I know this one's negative. It's going to be to the left. And this is the absolute value, which is the distance, and distance is always positive, so it's 8 tenths away. So even though its location is negative, its value is positive. Positive is bigger than negative. So the bigger side should open up to 8 tenths with the absolute value, and it does. So that was false. This one is true here. Hey, okay, now we need to compare 9 fourths is greater than negative 9 fourths. So I notice this one is positive and negative 9.4 is negative. Positive, no matter what the number is, is always going to be bigger. So 9 fourths is greater than negative 9 fourths is true. So that wasn't even a lot of math. It's more just reasoning and thinking about which one might be positive, which one's negative, noticing whole numbers. So pay attention to little things like that and double check your work there. Hey, we've got this table with these different landforms. Let me move my head out of the way. It's always a weird thing to say. And it wants to know which city is farthest from sea level. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to make sea level here at zero. And the first location was 49 above sea level. So I'm going to come 49 up. Okay, our next one is negative 28.75, and that goes down negative 28 and 75 hundredths. And then we've got 37 and a quarter goes up, but it's not to the 47, so, or 49, 40. Then our last one goes down negative 52 and a half, so down past 28, negative 52 and a half. So now it wants to know which one is farthest from zero. So I can see this one's pretty close to zero, this one's close to zero. I've got these two on either side that are farther away from zero. So this absolute value is 49. This absolute value is 52 and a half, and I know that 52 is greater than 49. So one that is farthest away is Lake Indigo. Hey, number six here, Miss Franco has 64 pencils and 48 erasers. She wants to put equal number of pencils and erasers into boxes. For her students, what is the greatest number, number of pencils or erasers Miss Franco can put in each box? So I notice all my numbers are smaller, so I need to make factors, we're making groups. So we've got 64 here, the factors of 64, one times 64, it's even, so I know two can, half of six is three, half of four is two, six plus four is 10, and three can't go into 10, so I know there's no three. Four, let's double check ourselves here. So if I don't know them, I do the division. Four goes in there one time, there's two left out of four, six, 4 into 24 is 6, so 16. I know 5 can't, 6 can't, 7 can't, but 8 can. 8 times 8. Okay, then we've got 48. 1 times 48. 2 times half of 48 is 24. 3 times, oh, I don't know that one. So I'm going to do my division. It was in there one time. And 18, 3 goes into 18 16 times. 4, I know, goes in there. 4 times 12. 5 can't. 6 can. 6 times 8. And 7 can't. 
So I'm looking for the biggest number they have in common. They do not both have 48. They do not both have 24. Oh, but they do have 16. So we can't just pick the biggest number. It doesn't just want to know the greatest numbers. It wants to know the greatest number for both of them. And the greatest number for both was 16. So 24 is a factor of 48, but it's not a factor of 64. So you actually need to do the work to find the greatest number for both of those things. Okay, number six here, we've learned seven. So again, we need to read carefully greatest over on the left to least on the right. So opposite of how our number lines go. So I know my positive numbers are going to be biggest, 52.56, 72.56, 25. So one thing I like to do is change those des or those fractions into decimals. That was a two five, I believe. So I can say five divided by six. Five, six can't go into five, so I added that zero. Six goes into fifty eight times. That's forty eight. Two left over, I'll bring down another zero. Six goes into 20 three times. So this one is 72.83 and 72.25. So this one is larger. So I'll drag that one first, my next positive number. Then the rest are my negative numbers, 71.1, negative 72, negative 71, and a third. Let's see if I can remember those, 71.1, 72, 71, and a third, and they were all negative. So I'm gonna draw this little number line to help me think through these. So I'm gonna put negative 71 here, negative 72 here. So, oh, I know that one goes bam right on that line. That one was easy. But 71.1, so just one space over, and then 71 and a third, if I change that to a decimal, three goes into 10 three times. So not perfect, but it would keep on going 0.333 forever. So 71.1, 71.2, 71.3 is here. So remember we're going backwards on our number line. So next I would have 71.1, then negative 71.3, then negative 72. So that point 0.1 was the next largest, then a third, then negative 72 is the smallest. So again, just make sure we're reading these directions. I think you guys are capable of doing this. We just need to double check that we're not putting them in the wrong order. I like to think of it as if someone's building my house, these little details are important. They accidentally flip my house around and put the garage on the wrong side. Well, maybe that's not going to work for me. So yeah, it was the right thing, but they've got to be in the right order. Hey, number eight, we've got one fifth negative 0.6 and their opposite. So I need to put one fifth negative 1.6, the opposite of a fifth and the opposite of negative 0.6 on the number line. So that's four answers on this same number line. So I notice this is cut into one, two, three, four, five parts. So one fifth is pretty easy. And the opposite of one fifth is negative one fifth. Now we've got negative six tenths here. Let me get to this next page. Let me go over there, there we go. Negative six tenths. So negative six tenths, but my number line was cut into fifths. So I want to change it into fifths. 10 divided by two is five. So six divided by two is three. So negative three fifths, one, two, three. And the opposite of that is positive three fifths, one, two, three. So your decimal and your fraction have to match each other to put them on the same number line. Or I could have cut these, if I had one fifth and made it into tenths times two times two, 
But I notice here this isn't cut into 10. So each piece is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. There was the 6. Here was 2 out of 10 or 1 fifth. They're equivalent. So you need to do some thinking about that to make sure that they're going on the same number line. You can't just count six places over. That would put you over here past the number one. And I know I don't have a hole. We have zero holes. It needs to be between zero and one. Hey, we've got Corey is running every third day and swimming every fourth day. So if he runs and swims today, how many days will it be before he does it again on the same day? So he's running every three days, swimming every four. So he, if he runs again, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. So those are all the days he's going to run. If he runs on the fourth or if he swims on the fourth day, he did not run on the fourth day. She would swim again on the eighth day, but he's not running on that day. If he swims again, it'll be on the 12th day, which also is a running day. So the next time he's going to run and swim on the same day is 12 days. So every 12 days, he'll run and swim at the same time. Hey, let me move up here. So we've got these four cities, and I think you guys can do this, but I bet a lot of us forgot to read the directions super careful. Drag the cities into the correct order with coldest on the top, which is kind of backwards. So when I think about a thermometer, coldest is on the bottom, but it wants coldest to be on the top. So we've got to read those directions. And warmest is on the bottom. So I know my coldest numbers are going to be negative. If I'm thinking about thermometer, zero, one, two, three, four. So negative four for Rock Falls is the coldest, but it should go on the top. Then my next negative number is Newton Canyon. Should go right under that. And then if I keep going up, here's zero. Then I've got negative 4.8 is Maple Grove. So that leaves me last. The highest temperature is Beecher Creek, and it wants warmest on the bottom. So you just got to make sure you read those directions really careful. That wasn't hard math. You just have to follow the directions. Okay? Mathematicians have to pay attention to the little details like that. Hey, number 11. I think a lot of you probably got this one too, but I bet you forgot one thing. So while in flight, a hot air balloon decreases its elevation by 83 and two fifths. So we've got this hot air balloon up here. Oh, this is a good hot air balloon. Definitely don't go for a ride in that. You'll fall. So that's not safe. So we've got this air balloon. It said it decreased. That means it went down 83 and two fifths. But if I, all I say is that the hot air balloon went 83 and two fifths, you would probably assume that it's positive. So if I want to tell them that it went down, you've got to put that negative sign here. It was ne it went negative 83 and two fifths. Whoops, I did not go down to my denominator. Negative 83 and two fifths was the first um, thing the hot air balloon did. Then it increased 83. 0.7. So I've got a negative number and I've got a positive number. So it does not matter what those numbers are. Negative 82 and two fifths is always going to be less than 83 point. Whoops. Got to get over here. How do I? There we go. Is less than 83.7. So if you don't have that negative sign there, you are not telling me that it went down. You're just telling me it moved and I would think it went up and I would think it went up again. But this tells me it went down and then up. So we've got to compare those using the right rational numbers. Okay, and last of all, we've got Mr. Ling. He stopped for gas on his short road trip. The change in the amounts of gas was 5.5, so we're going to Plot that here, 5.5, and its opposite is negative 5.5, so negative 5 and a half. Now we need to read these statements and decide which is true. 
the distance of both points from each other is 5.5. Well, here's 5.5 to get to zero, and here's another 5.5. So 5.5 plus 5.5 is 11. So they're actually 11 away from each other, not 5.5. So that one doesn't make sense. Both points have an absolute value of 5.5. It takes 5.5 to get to negative. It takes 5.5 to get to positive. So that sounds pretty good. The absolute value of both points is zero. The only time you have an absolute value of zero is if you're on zero. And both points are on the same side of zero. Well, that's not true. So the only one that's true is they both have an absolute value of 5.5. Okay, so hopefully that helps you think about some of the little details that you need to watch for. So in your ed, if you have been reassigned the, just lost my light there. You've been reassigned the retake for module two, go ahead and do that. And then you'll have another little assignment today as well. Okay, let me know if you were stuck on anything or if you have questions before you do the retake.